Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today is January 22nd with a 22nd video of the year and today we're going to do our third Blender tutorial and we're going to build a 3D push button. And so Blender of course is a free graphics application. The download link is available in the description of this video and it, like I said it's 100% free and it's only like 50 or 60 megs and it's very powerful. So uh, if you've never used 3D before this is going to be for a beginner uh, so it'll be perfect for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you're new to Blender, I'm going to give you a real quick uh, rundown on about how you use the interface. So to select objects, you don't left click, you right click. So that's how you do that. It holds shift to select multiple objects just like any other app application. To move around in the viewport, you just use your middle mouse button. To zoom up, you use your scroll wheel. And to pan, you use shift and left click. All right, pretty simple. Uh, to delete something, you just hit the delete key and then enter. So I'm going to go to file new just to reset everything. Just so we're looking at the same thing. Okay, so now we want to delete this cube and we want to add a floor. Right now it's empty. So shift A, mesh and plane. Hold To scale it, we basically want to make this larger. You hit the S key on your keyboard and you can move your mouse around or you can enter a number value which will multiply based on whatever the current size is. So if we hit S10, multiplies the size by 10. All right, so now what I want to do is add our actual cylinder, which will serve as the base of our push button. I, I'm going to zoom up here. So right away, if we push this up, we can see it's actually larger. It was going uh, in the middle of the floor. So we want to scale this down quite a bit on the Z axis. And so over here, we can see this icon. It shows us the Z, Y, and X based on where we're at in the scene. So we know we want to just basically scale this down a lot this way. So if we hit S and we move it around, we see it will scale it on all three axes. So basically we want to constrain that to Z, just like that. And we want it to be pretty flat, so then we'll just drop it down. Okay, so now what we want to do is go into edit mode. So edit mode, you can click on this menu down here and then click edit mode. Or you could switch back, before, back and forth between edit and object with your tab. Just like that. All right, so real quickly, um, you have three different, uh, basically, select modes. Uh, and the first one here is just the vertex, where you can select individual vertexes by right-clicking. Edge mode allows you to select the edges. And then face mode allows you to select all the faces. We want edge mode because what we're going to do is take all of this, all of these edges around here, and don't worry, there's a shortcut to just do it in one click, and then we're going to extrude it a little bit. So to select all of the edges on the same path, we hit, we hold Alt and then right click. Once we do that, we want to hit E, which is a shortcut for extrude. Now, if we do that, we can see that uh, right now we're just moving it up, but we, we don't want to move it from its actual position we just want to scale it, so we're going to hit S. Now, we don't see anything happening because it's scaling it on the Z axis, so what we want to do is exclude Z and only have X and Y be the axes that are scaled. So Shift and Z is what you want to do that. And we're going to scale it in maybe just right around there. All right, once you're, you have it where you want it, you just left click. We're going to extrude it again, hit E, and Right now it is on the z-axis, so we don't have to hit any other buttons. And we're just going to just above the plane. All right. Okay, so, so far, so good. I uh, What we want to do now is add in some edge loops here. And the reason being, I will show you real quick what this looks like if you don't, if you just take this and leave it as it is. I uh, Hit A to deselect everything, and then A will select everything again. We come over here and we find smooth. And then we will switch back into object mode. And we'll pull this out here. And we want to click on add modifier over here, subdivision surface. And we can take the subdivisions to two. 
And as you can see, it looks nothing like what we had before. So to fix that, go back in here to edit mode by hitting tab. We have to add in some edge loops. And so the way you do that, hit control R and you'll see this purple outline. And depending on where you're at, it will place it in you know different areas. So you want to select on just like right over here or hover over it rather. And then with your mouse wheel, you can, you can uh, scroll up to add uh, these different edge loops. Once you have like about four, just hit uh, your left mouse button. And once you do that, you're not done yet because then you, you have the option of where you want to place these. So I'm going to leave it just kind of in the middle where it was. And then just left click. Now they're set. Now if we want this edge to be real smooth, we have to drag up another edge loop real close to this line right here. So control R. Just click once and end it right there. So now we have a nice solid edge. And we could do the same thing up here at the top. So control R and about four of them. And then left click once and then again. And then control R, we'll go right here. And then drag it real close. And then control R over here. Drag it real close. And then for our base down here, We'll hit Control R. Oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna edit, undo that. We want to go into. If you want to see things a little bit more clear, clearly, we can select the wireframe. So Control R. We'll add four, and then click again, and then let me go back into solid mode now. We can see now it changed it, the appearance. And I'm also going to hit five on the number pad just to get into to a different view mode ortho graphics so that I, instead of perspective, I'm going to hit control R. Actually, you know what? Let me go into wireframe real quick. There. Control R. Click once and move that up to the top. We'll go back to solid. All right, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so now if we switch out, we'll go hit tab, and let me zoom out here and see where we're at. Now let's set up a camera view, and we'll get our material making this look uh, chrome. So to get into camera view, hit the zero on your number pad, and real quickly, I do this every time. I go to view properties and lock camera to view, and then view properties. All right, so if we zoom up, Maybe it's right around here. All right, and then go ahead. I want to click on this, this world icon, and I want to select cycles render up here. And then for the color, I'm gonna make this white. That's basically the, the background. It'll, it'll affect uh, everything in view here. And then I wanna come over here to the render section and for device, I'm going to use GPU compute. And if you don't have the option set, you uh, you have to make some um, adjustments in your user preferences, I believe. Um, I'll link to that uh, if that's the issue, and you you, you know you don't have this option. Uh, so basically, switching from C CPU to GPU, it's a lot faster for the render time by like hundreds of percentage. So I'm going to come down here and for sampling. Uh, right now, if we leave, if we left this at 10 and we just go up here and hit render, we see it's kind of just grainy looking. Uh, so hit escape. The higher you have your sample for your preview or your render set, the better it's going to look. So if I change this to 100, and also real quick, one thing I want to do down here, I'm going to change down here performance. I'm going to change this X and Y of the tiles to 256, which works well for GPU compute, compute. Now if I hit render, it takes a little bit longer, but it definitely does look better. All right, so now I, I, I'm I also gonna change preview to 100 as well. Now I'll here's what preview is. If we hit zero to get out of camera mode and we change this from solid to rendered, no matter where we're at in the scene, it's going to render it. 
And this is handy for several different reasons. I, you can quickly experiment with different materials, which is what we're going to do now. So the one thing is, if you select something, you, you're not going to be able to see uh, whatever is selected. So if we switch to, to solid, right click, we see that you know this is selected, our cylinder. We go over here to the material section, hit new. Now we can switch back to rendered. And basically we have just a, when you hit new by default, it's diffuse. Well, we want this to look like Chrome. So the way we could do that is change diffuse to, let me find it right here, this bottom one. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like a Chrome, but not quite. And we can change some values here. And I'm going to change the roughness here to 0 0.046. We can see that made a slight change. And for the, <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I'm going to sound like an idiot. For that value, I'm putting uh, 0 0.308. Um, all right, so, so far, so good. I these issues right here, they'll show up when you have like a single vertex in the middle. So I'm going to see if I can fix that real quick. And I, I paused it. What I decided I'm going to do is actually just get rid of the bottom plane in here. So to do that, switch here to first to solid. Then we'll go back to edit mode, hit tab. First real quick, I'm going to leave my camera view there. I'm going to hit zero to get out of there on the number pad. And we'll go here to plane, and let's select this one right here, and then just hit delete, face. Come back here, we'll change the rendered. All right. Okay, so now what I want to do is create the top portion, uh, which would be like this uh, glassy surface thing up here. All right, so. To do that, we're going to go back to solid mode, and I'm going to hit Shift A to add a cylinder. Now I'm going to hit seven on the number pad, and that gets us to the top view. And we're going to hit S for scale, just to scale this down. S again, just to scale up, just so it's barely inside our metal ring portion. So let me move around here. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay. And then I'm going to hit one to get into the front view. Obviously this thing is real big. So hit S for scale and then Z. Right around there and pull it up. Okay. So now this is all about the material. If we were to switch to render this is what it looks like. So I, uh, what I want to do is give this a new material, hit new. And for this, we're going to make this kind of cool looking. So we want to add a mix shader. So a mix shader allows you to add two different shaders. And then this value right here allows you to um, select basically which one will show up more. So for the first one, we're going to hit emission and then the second one we're going to select glass all right and for the color we're going to make it green here and green here as well and then for this value right here I'm going to type in point seven four two All right, and then you have options down here, which can, you know, if you play around with it and you like it, then I'm just going to leave it at zero. It'll work well for me. And I want to take the floor. So if you just right click on the floor, yeah, let's see up here. Up here, it's kind of like the layers panel. It'll show you that plane is selected. So hit new. We'll leave it at diffuse. We'll change color here. Yeah, something I'd say right around there. All right, and 
Now what I want to do is get out here, zoom out a little bit, and I want to add, go back to solid mode, a an emission plane. So if we just left click up here, yeah, right around there, add mesh plane, R45, R means rotate, and that means on 45 degrees, so I may want to back that up a little bit. And then I want to give this a new material, an emission, and the strength, we'll leave it 10. So now let's go back into our rendered mode, hit zero on your number pad, and you can hit render. And that adds a little bit more of detail, or, or light rather. Okay, zoom out. And when it comes to the lighting, you can really play around quite a bit. Um, so I hit zero or the zero key to get out of that view. Uh, our camera, as we can see, is right here. If we go to rendered, zoom up maybe a little bit. Well, let me take this out real quick. So now if I go in here and I choose rendered, we won't have that in view. And now the uh, that plane is still selected, which is the emission. You can play around with your brightness quite a bit. And you can see it really, it takes it up big time from 10 to, <laughs> from 10 to uh, whatever that number is, almost 8,000. So if you hit 30, we can see how much that affects the lighting, or maybe 50. And so you can see it begins to actually affect the, uh, the floor down here. And I kind of like that. Uh, I think that will work well. And let me see if there's anything else that I would want to do at this point. I'm going to select the green, so I'll just right click and select it, and I, this green button portion up here, and yeah, right click that again to make sure this shows up. Um, I want to go back over here to the modifier, subdivision surface, and I'm going to increase that, render to three, and once again, <laughs> looks like a piece of jello we have the same issue that happened before so if we go back into uh, solid mode and we click on edit or hit tab all we have to do is hit uh, control R and we'll add like four around there click again control R just in this tiny portion right there alright now we'll go back hit tab Go back to rendered. Now we can see it looks a bit better. So uh, we can really play around with the angles uh, just by hit, holding that middle mouse button. All right, I think I like that angle. All right, so now we have the uh, basically the modeling portion done. Now I'm going to show you real quickly how easy it is to animate as if this thing is being pushed. All right, so what we want to do, I'm going to go back here to solid. And down here at the very bottom, we have basically a timeline. And we can add keyframes just like we did uh, in, in After Effects uh, and even Flash. It works much in the same way. So to set a keyframe, all we do is hit I, well, first make sure we have this uh, green object selected. You hit I, and then you specify location. So now there's a keyframe right there. If we move forward, say around 20, and we move this down on the Z axis, maybe right there, right around there, and then hit I again, and select location. So now, this animates as if it is being pushed. All right, very simple. So now you're ready to basically render this. Um, so of course, if we just hit render right now, it's only going to render just a still image. 
So if I hit escape, we can real quickly see that we have here in dimensions uh, all these options right here. I'm going to select that one, and so that's going to take the resolution down a little bit. We have the frame right here. Um, now, when it renders this, it'll render based on the current render. Now, 100 is still pretty low. Uh, I would actually, I'm going to adjust mine to 500 for the render. And if I click on animation, it is now going to go through all of these frames and it's going to take it a while so what I'm going to do is pause this so you know obviously we part we have like 20 different frames here to, to work with so it's going to take a little time so I'm going to pause this and then um, I'll unpause it when we have the actual animation played so I will do that okay so I I should have put I uh, end frame over here I should have specified 20 but uh, that's no that's no big deal um, so it got to uh, I'm at tr frame 21 now if I just hit escape and hit play let me show this over here what this looks like and of course this is looping but yeah that looks pretty cool uh, very simple animation obviously but it takes quite a while to render this at a decent uh, setting I think yeah the sampling we had at 500 but anyhow I uh, let me see here real quick I'm gonna move this off so if you wanted to actually save this as a video file you could have done it we could have done it here in blender I uh, by coming over here and changing uh, the output here to one of these available formats but you can also um, let me come over here and just show you real quick. The video that we saw that was just playing was uh, actually an image sequence of these files. And there was also an AVI in here, but that does like, like never works. So I just deleted it. And so if you have Adobe After Effects, and you can use other, other applications as well. I'm going to open that up real quick. I just want to show you guys a real quick tip. Let me scale this window down. Move that into place here. And uh, if we go to composition, new composition, 960 by 720 is the, um, the dimensions of those images. I'm going to hit OK. And if I go to File, Import File, and we go to the temp directory, which is where it was set by default, and just select one of these. And it auto automatically knows it's a sequence. Hit Import. Drag this over here. Let me scale out. And now, if we hit play, if I can find play, or rather hit zero on the number cat, on the number P, we can see that it goes through our animation. And if you wanted to loop, that's fine. Although you can do that automatically. And then you could take this. I'm just going to do this real quick. Maybe right around there. And then when you're ready to basically present it, go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Render Queue, or just Add to Render Queue. And then you have your options there. Once that shows up, you have to save the project first um, to export it in any format that you want. All right, so that is the tutorial. Uh, if you enjoyed this, I'm pr producing basically a tutorial every day of 2014. So to get an email uh, notification of that, just subscribe to the channel here. Um, you can also like me on the different, or like designcourse.com rather, on the different social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, and Google. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.